My name is Kevin Harrington. I'm team leader in the targeted therapy team at the Institute of Cancer Research. Realisin is the trade name of a virus which is called an oncolytic virus. An oncolytic virus is a type of virus which shows the very special characteristic of being able to grow in cancer cells but being almost unable to grow in normal cells. We're researching viruses of this type because they, we believe that they can be very, very specific anti-cancer treatments. So, so the virus, Reovirus, is a specific strain of the virus. It's so-called Reovirus type 3 Deering strain. This virus is ubiquitously present in the environment, so if you were to take a sample of water from, from a ditch, from a puddle, from a river or a lake, you would be able to isolate Reovirus from those samples. This specific strain of the virus has been maintained in laboratories and has become attenuated, which means that it grows less well in normal cells as a consequence of that. But it has this potent ability to grow in cancer cells and kill them. The virus itself is a wild type virus. It hasn't been manipulated by genetic engineering. Um, but clearly by being in the laboratory it's undergone specific modifications that have occurred as part of its natural passage through cell lines that have rendered it specifically active against cancer cells. Most of us in, in the world have been exposed to Rio virus, usually at some point in our childhood. If we were to measure antibody levels from the general public we would see that between 70 and 100 percent of people had been exposed to this virus in the past and they usually would not know they'd even seen the virus because it doesn't cause a specific illness. We, we had conducted a number of studies in my lab here at the Institute of Cancer Research and also with colleagues who work elsewhere in the United Kingdom, so with Professor Alan Melcher in Leeds and with Professor Hardev Panda in Guildford. And between the three of us we demonstrated across a range of different tumour types that when we combine the virus with certain cytotoxic chemotherapy drugs, including platins and taxanes, the virus is able to kill far better than just on its own. And there are a number of mechanisms that underlie that. It can influence the rate at which the virus replicates and the rate at which it kills the cancer cells. It also appears to be able to render the cancer cells more susceptible to the effects of the chemotherapy through a process that's called apoptosis, so it makes them more likely to commit suicide in response to the chemotherapy. For that reason, we decided that this was an excellent strategy to take forward into clinical testing, and we conducted early phase one studies with taxanes. We then decided that we would combine both taxanes and platins together and add the Rio virus to that in the phase 1-2 trial that we've just published in the journal Clinical Cancer Research. In the phase 1 trial, the aim of that was to check that combining the virus with these two different cytotoxic chemotherapy compounds would be safe. And so we did a standard so-called phase 1 dose escalation design where we increased the amount of virus we delivered to cohorts of three patients alongside standard doses of the two chemotherapy drugs, um, carboplatin and paclitaxel. We demonstrated that that was entirely safe in the initial phase 1 study. And the signal that we got from that phase 1 study, because there was a, a relatively large number of patients with head and neck tumours, we saw that there appeared to be significant activity in that group of patients. Now that mirrored data that we had generated in my lab here at the Institute of Cancer Research demonstrating that the combination of virus with both platin and taxane chemotherapy was potently active in these types of tumours. So in the phase 2 component of the trial we only recruited patients with tumours in the head and neck region and we saw really very impressive response rates in those patients. So the patients who entered into this phase 2 component of the study were almost all patients who had had a great deal of previous treatment either with surgery, radiotherapy and with cytotoxic chemotherapy and had still progressed on that treatment. Most of the patients had seen platinum-based chemotherapy beforehand had shown themselves to be refractory to that treatment, so essentially their tumour was no longer responding to that sort of treatment. Under those circumstances, we'd expect that the average response rate to treatment might be as low as in single-digit digit figures, 
Um, instead of which, what we were able to demonstrate was that the response rates were much higher, with a third of the patients showing objective responses of their tumours, a third of the patients showing stabilisation of their disease. And those figures would be far in excess of what we might expect from this population of patients treated just with the drug on its own. Um, of course, we cannot tell what is the component of the activity that's related to this cytotoxic chemotherapy and what is related to the virus. And for that reason, we have to conduct phase three clinical trials and those studies are now underway. Unfortunately, the group of patients that we're recruiting into this study, patients with receiving so-called second-line therapy with platin refractory disease, have an extremely poor prognosis. The average survival for this group of patients would be somewhere between three to four months. In our phase 1-2 study, we showed that that had been prolonged to as long as seven months, albeit not in a randomized trial. So we are hoping that in the randomized phase 3 study, where the primary endpoint is overall survival, that we will see a significant improvement in outcomes in this population of patients who are receiving palliative treatment for a disease that really carries an appalling prognosis. too early to make any judgments as to whether or not this is an advance in the field of treating cancers, but the fact that we've got the confidence to take this to phase 3 study, and the fact that that study is now recruiting well and should close in the course of the next year or so and give us answers within the next two years, really gives us cause for great optimism that the field of oncolytic virotherapy is progressing very well.